is Claudia Anderson, and I am the founder of Audio Enhancement some 40 years ago. When my baby Jeremy was born, I was told that he would never be able to talk. I was buried there. Mom, did you know I was dead? Don't you take me to the doctor? Do you think I was born with me? She said, yeah, no time to tell. Tell about that. Because I was told my baby would Sorry. succeed. And I said, oh, yes, he will. Matter of fact. Justin is my second deaf child, and he was born five years later. He had hearing aids on at seven days. She started body enhancement to help my brothers hear in a regular classroom. Wearing hearing aids, they were not hearing clearly what the teacher was saying. The only solution that was offered was simply, oh, we take them and we put them over to the side. She wasn't willing to accept that. I just didn't want my babies not to fit in. Well, I want me to everything right with everything I have. And so we went about the country finding uh, classes, people who knew about hearing, understanding the signal to noise ratio, understanding what it takes to have a child hear. I didn't know it was not normal to have deaf brothers. We did a lot of things that were focused around, you know, helping them to be able to hear and participate in normal life. We admired our cars, our beds, everything so that when I talk, my kids could hear. That being the premise that if they can't hear you, they'll never talk. You need to talk to me. You can't even know how much my mom and my dad and me and my brothers they have me. They must talk wrong. The way they is just trying to get down to them on me. How he happened to do anything. I thought I knew you to hear this time. I can't tell where this time come from. I did not help her to not be speak as well. With her ingenuity, she went in to find a, a way to put a microphone on the teacher and to get that sound signal so that my brothers could hear what their teachers were saying, no matter where the teachers were in the classroom. Everybody wanted to sit by Jeremy and Justin. And the teachers, they could hear what was going on now so they could see the difference. I would have been to make everyone in that classroom or around the room be able to hear the teacher and get direction. And that's what we want. We want our students to know what they expect them to do. The lanyard is awesome because it provides the microphone for the voice amplification. All students now have more opportunity to really understand and hear their teacher despite whatever challenges they might personally face. The engagement in the classroom is different. You notice how students' attention is more focused on the teacher, how the kids are able to better participate in classroom instruction because they can adequately and accurately hear what the teacher is saying. Audio enhancement made a huge difference in not only the hearing quality of our students, but their ultimate academic outcomes as well. So when we look at teachers being able to amplify their voices, being able to use technology to begin and end class, it just becomes magic. Growing a family company has been a great experience, both as a child and as a mother. We all have very different talents. We all very much respect what the other one does, and we all very much don't want to do their jobs. I think it's been a great experience to be able to continue on the legacy that our mother built, and hopefully to continue that on for many years to come. They get two tours there at the corporate office? We do. <laughs> And so that's my wife. Um, the company hit high school was a contractor for 10 years. Pro audio video contractor. My name's Claudia. So, we have enough of that. I married the only daughter. So that's my wife's mother, it's my mother-in-law. And the joke is, so it's wonderful that in a family company, but I married the only daughter, so my relationship is a sine wave. It's got downs and then it's ups, but the problem is it keeps the whole wave shifts down and down. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. She uh, created an industry. Our reason for being is to make sure every single student hears clearly. So that's how we started. We put microphones on teachers. That's why I have that there, is because I'll give you a, it's real simple. I just turned it off. You can still hear it, it's not as easy. And it's a psychological effect. And what we overcome when we put microphones on teachers is we remove the distance between teacher and student because the distance is the enemy. Now, everything else we do, we do because we want to make sure these kids can hear it. It started around making sure that, you know, that these boys can hear and so on. So our paging solution comes from that. A very large school district came to us and said, hey, I'm talking 190 schools in Florida. There's bunches of those districts in Florida. There's more than three of that size. We love your audio systems. 
We have these great speakers with excellent sound, and I got this crappy speaker over here that sounds like a Can't we just make that sound with three-door system? And we partnered a little while to create a system, but it just didn't work for somebody else's system, so we went back to ground one, to square one ground, and created a system for schools. Most of the systems out there today, uh, the, the primary systems out there are Roland Borg or a Bogan or a Valcom. Roland Borg is a hospital system. It works pretty well in schools, but it wasn't ever designed for it. Bogan and Valcom are both airport or large building, uh, building uh, paging solutions. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to go back and come up with a solution that if you can run that or the iPad, you can run this. So that's what we came up with. So from the 30,000 foot view, our system is a one-use server that lives in an MDF or an IDF at the school. You can virtualize it. I actually have some schools that do that. Uh, and it works just fine, except if somebody digs up the fire link from your office, your network, your network operation center, to that school, you're out. Unless you have a redundant ring where you can go back. Or your server craps out there. We want to make sure that in those times, so we put a server there, that's, our, that's what we'd rather do, but we don't have to, it can't be virtualized. In the front office, we put a kiosk, a, uh, it is an Android all-in-one computer. Its job is to log into that server so that it can interact. When that call goes out, the intercom call, um, and here's the call buttons. I'll just kind of pass this around to everybody. This got broke, so I didn't plug it in. Uh, TSA doesn't like my stuff. Green button is a simple call to the front office. Red button is an emergency. But we also have what's called our safe system, and we'll show that, and then I'm, we'll touch the points that uh, you had done, and the questions that you had asked in, in the follow-up email. On every microphone that we've made in the last 15 years, ever since Panasonic has been making the microphone equipment for us, there has been a panic button on it. How this came about, um, oddly, our, our, our CEO, was on the, the National AASA Superintendent National Shows. And what he did, he'd get on the bus, going from the hotel to the show, and he has the exhibitor badge. I call it the dirty vendor badge. And so, he's on the bus, and they're like, oh crap, you're a vendor, I won't talk to you. And then, okay, what do you do? Well, we're riding the hands, but we do the microphones in the classroom. And he's like, okay, can you put a panic button on it? I have no idea what you're talking about. He, he didn't say this out loud, he was thinking this. It happened three times over two years at these national shows, so he stopped and said, hey, I don't want to sound stupid, but I've been asked this for the last two years, and I have no idea what you're talking about. And what they were asking for, it's not going to hurt it, it's already broken. That's it's what I figured, it's already broken. If you want to stop on it, then I can go back and turn it and get a new one, because it's got visible damage. Um, <laughs> what they were looking for is because in an emergent situation, the very worst is what happened, didn't get to the classroom, but Denver's had this three times in the last two years. And greater, color, uh, greater Denver area has had it like five times or six times. Sad that it's happening there. That's the worst case solution. But if they have a situation where the teacher can't go to the wall to press that button, or pick up the phone because you can put hot buttons on a the phone, they wanted something that was on their person. And when teachers wear the microphone, they don't take it off. In fact, sometimes, they go home. We have about a, mm, between a one to two percent attrition rate on microphones, and what happens is at the end of the school year, they're not going back to that school, and they wear it home, and the microphone's gone, so they have to buy a new mic. Can we sell, we can sell more mics then? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we probably order these by 100,000. Uh, or, I don't know, maybe that's been, at least 50. Uh, Panasonic sure likes to make them. Anyway, they, what they're looking for is something that's on the teacher, so that they can uh, send a panic alert. And I'll show you what that looks like, how it goes through, and, and what we can do with it. The classroom module, this is an MS600, which has an XD, um, a microphone receiver built into it. See the lights behind you, Jay? This is a portable solution that has the same part. It's this device. We took the guts out and put it in a box with this device. This is the classroom module. It's got microphone connections, but it has a network set based endpoint. For common zones, we use this device, which has the exact same board in it, but not the classroom amplifier, RS-232, and all those parts. Yes, sir. So what is that, then? This? Yes. It's a combination of that part and this part in one box. 
We simply literally took the boxes out and made a plastic case. So if we had a classroom, mm -hmm. you'd have to take that piece in your hand and one of those and have it in the ceiling somewhere. We take these two. If you're going to do both, you just put this one box in. It's, uh, we used to have these separate and in an enclosure. When, uh, when Pooter did their RFP, that's what we put in every classroom. It's a wall box that has this in it and this in it in their entirety with their cases. Our uh, Tom Dobson, the, the large fellow that you saw on the show, part of the, the video, they wanted something a little more elegant, something with a smaller footprint that I can also mount in the ceiling. And that's what this is. It's called an MS600. It has an MS500 classroom unit and an XD receiver without their boxes in one unit. So does that mount on like the grid or how does it? All, all on the grid. If I take these two screws out, there's a back piece that you mount. It, it's a close click. We even put a little level in it, so when you put it in the wall, you can make sure it's level. And then you put these two screws down to attach it firmly. It can mount with a mount ceiling mount kit. Uh, what we did in Boulder, we did it before we had these, but we would have taken this and just mounted it to the enclosure. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You want to see the lights. What we're seeing there is those lights, and I actually have a different microphone than I do. I'll show you that the lights indicate whether you've got signal or not. And that was here, I'll, you guys want to look at it. Then I'll pass that around too. This oper the microphone's operating 1.9 gigahertz, it's called the dead. We did that because we can do some really cool things that we couldn't do with IR. IR mics work great, but my IR mics, if you cover it, you cover it. And you know, if you're, everybody else in the industry, besides the Panasonic mic, had problems picking it up. Do you have mics in the building over here? No. Yeah, we do. Oh, well, right. well, yeah. Yes. yeah. And you probably have some. I know the company, I know the history, and I know what happened. Mm -hmm. So I understand why it probably was not very fun for you folks to deal with that. Uh, for the while, the while, we made microphones for AMX. So you probably had a little teardrop that's gray and white, not gray and black, it said AMX on it. We printed that for AMX. We stopped doing that after we started running some issues with them. And that's kind of got bought by Samsung. It's where the world is today. Common zones are the very same. Everybody has common zones that are just the same. 70 volt or 100 volt speakers. Some folks use 25 volt, but that's kind of being passe. There are not many of them and they're using 25 volt anymore. But you've got a constant voltage speaker with a line of speakers and then an amplifier channel. And then what we do is we feed the signal from this device to the line of speakers. So common zones are very similar to what you're used to. In fact, if you've got good speakers, um, I visited a school, never visited that one, but down in Sheridan, that is a very similar design with that same system. And they want to use the, this system, but they want to use their existing speakers because they don't want to have the cost again. And we can reuse them if they're good. Most of the time, if they're 20 years old, we'll replace the amplifiers. Uh, for Pooter, they really very specifically wanted to remove all the old speakers and put in all new speakers. And if the wire was good, we reuse the wire. That's what we're good at. Okay, speakers in classrooms. Um, flashers are, we have a couple of different kinds of flashers. Uh, we have one that's an IP flasher, it's a SIP based algo endpoint, and another one that actually ties into our amplifier in the classroom. So, make sense, folks? Yeah. Yes. All right, so what, I wanna, what do I want to go to now is I actually want to address what you guys had asked about. So, paging. To make a page, I'm going to page the entire school. Oh, you know what I didn't do? That's a dummy. No mic. I didn't put my microphone on. <laughs> I apologize. We did this because everybody knows what a, the microphone is and they can talk into the microphone. However, we don't have to use the microphone. You can pick up the phone because we actually do a SIP trunk as long as you've got a VoIP system. If you don't have a SIP trunk and you're using an analog system, then we use a, sing, uh, a single line device connection and we use a, a, 80, a, a, a little unit that turns digital uh, from analog to digital, an 80 transfer. Turns it into SIP and then we can talk to it. Pretty much the similar to everyone else's demo. Test one, two, test one, two. Is that still offline? I 
I didn't hear that. Oh, let's make sure that I'm on. I brought this up because I want this to be our common zone. So you make the page, whether you want to page everybody or I want to just page one room. Hello, hello. So I did, I'm not hitting that one. I didn't no, you did. Did you hear it? Yeah. Okay. So that's my common zone. You make the page to a classroom. And I said earlier, we take the map, whatever map. That's why I asked you for the map, because I always like to show who we're working with. This is just, uh, for the demo case, another version of that. This is just an Android tablet to show you that this is another front office. So when I page, when I have a call from the classroom, so I just called from the classroom. I'm going to accept that call. Hello, hello. And again, I can transfer that to the phone. I have communication. That SIP trunk allows me to have unlimited connection back and forth. So it's just in the programming to where I want it to ring. In Puder, they didn't really want it to ring in everywhere. Um, just down the way, is it Timnath? It wasn't Timnath, it was a new one. Just south of Timnath. That was the only site where when they pressed the call button in the classroom, that they actually made the page and it rang on the front office phone. Uh, this is there just in case the phone doesn't work and somebody didn't log into the computer. Because this here is simply that device logging into the server. So if somebody doesn't log in, this is actually making a SIP call from the classroom to the front office using that little button there or a touch screen version that we make as well. It is making, placing the call to the front office. Oddly enough, we have a school district in Lyon County, Nevada, that we're currently dealing with. The front office secretary has a specific hearing loss, and it happens to be that frequency. She can't hear it. We've amplified it. She can't hear that. She can't hear that frequency. So we're making her de we're going to make her desk phone ring because it rings at a different frequency. That's hard coded and it's, it'd be a complete firmware change for her. We can do things like that because we actually control everything we do and we do all things <coughs> we do ourselves. Um, the other button is a panic alert, and might as well show it. Okay, I just hit acknowledge. The lights changed. I thought about for half a second using that same Ringer for my wife. <laughs> and then, you ever heard that don't ever say the first thing that came to your head or the second? I didn't do it. Because she heard the ringer that I used one time. When the panic button goes off, whether I push it here or I push it on the emergency button, it lets me know where it's coming from. I put this one in the computer lab at uh, Granville Elementary School. And so you see it on the, on the map as red. It'll also tell you whether it's, now this is kind of cut down. It tells you right here that this one came from the button press, not the microphone. It will say XD if it's the microphone, so you know what's happening from one classroom. When I press acknowledge, it, it silences that terrible sound. Yes, you can change that sound. It's just a digital audio file. All sounds are simply a digital audio file. It's easy. Just click, 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 and you change it. When, I, when the lights went off, did you see it go red? There were three reds. That's a, a visual indication in the classroom to the teacher that they have sent the panic signal. We didn't realize how big a deal that was. Because when we first built this, we didn't have the Epic solution. We had it just, it's called SAFE, uh, so the SAFE system. And when we were doing it, we started hearing from teachers, hey, I don't know if this has been launched or not. How do I know? So we started looking at you know, putting lights in the classroom, which would have been a huge headache. And Panasonic says, oh, we built that in. So it's just RS-232 code that Epic is then sending to the room when we've got it all set up. And when I acknowledge it, it goes green, red, green. To, not, to let the teacher know that help is on the way. Well, that turned out to be a huge issue for those teachers. And then you do what you're going to do. You do with your standard response. And at that point, you can end it. You don't want to have anybody, just just anybody, ending the event. You want a senior administrator to have that right. We do it by permission loans. Same thing you guys do with your network. So when it's done, they have to type in something to indicate what's going on. 
And we did that because had we not, we've actually had people at schools that have had it for 10 years now and said, how do you like your safe system? Well, we love it. We used it twice last year and said, okay, what happened? And they're like, uh, well, I'm not really sure. So we put the notes in so you can pull that up and that stores it. We can pull the logs and find everything that happened. Make sense? Let's see if that guy's gonna. Do you have a lot of Wi-Fi or a lot of Wi-Fi frequencies going on in here? It shouldn't. Here it should be just three. Th this will come up. It's just it's fighting some for, for some frequency bandwidth. Not a big deal. It's over there too. So that's how the, the, the panic system works both on the wall and in the classroom. So programming a bell schedule, it's easier to do here. A bell schedule, and I didn't put this on the map, I wanted to show you here how to do it. When does school start in August? Do you remember? I want to say the 19th. <laughs> okay, so and when does it end? Ballpark. Doesn't have to be exact. Wait, May 19th. Okay, so when you first set up the map, we're going to say August, uh, it's 23, 24. Let's go back and save it to 22. Okay, so let's call it the 22nd. So you touch it. Oh, you're not going to let me do it? Oh. The Android device has a, it has a reset if I do it that way. So this may have been better with the computer. It's going to reset that way. This is important, so let me take a moment. Let's see if it loaded. When is your Wi Fi fail? Excuse me? Right, it's a joke. When is the Wi Fi fail? <laughs> I have a hotspot going. No, no, this is, it's not, it's actually connecting. You disconnect it, and then reconnect it. I'm actually connected up with that. But what I can do, okay. It's flapping. Oh, is that for this, folks? This is, what the fear is when you set it up this way. So I'm going to quickly make a change. Anyway, you select the date and you put it in. So it was a cool little feature that you drag the year and then you can do it. But you say, so today's the normal schedule. Uh, what is today? I've got to go in and uh, setting up, but let's see, March 24th. 24. You select the day, you select the schedule, you save the schedule and that plays. My little network adapter. No Wi Fi found, so my Wi Fi adapter is having fun. Called Server Fun. So, what I'm trying to do, folks, is you drag it, and I can drag it. And set the dates. My little device, this Android, you can pull it down. It's not designed to do the programming from, you're generally going to program from a computer. And like I said, up to this point, it works great. And we're going to be live. 
Murphy came and visited me. Okay. So now we'll connect it that way. It should come back up. But we'll see doing this. I dragged you so like the whole whole time and you set it up. The reason I want to do it is I mean I can do this. You select all of them. That's why we use Android, um, Google, because this is not able to do that in. The other software. So it's getting there, it's just not as easy as I want it. Let's just say it goes to the And the reason that, that we set it up that way, so you, the first thing you do is you set up your year. And after you set up your year, if I want to change the schedule, like let's say I've got a late start. I built a couple of schedules for a late start and an early start. So let's say I want all the Fridays and all of the ones that have highlighted, it selects them. That's why you drag and go the whole way with my device light. I did everything except for that one. We'll call it a late start Friday. And I can do the same thing I did. I do the same thing. It looks, it's not cumbersome at all until I did that. If I want to early out on Wednesdays, I select the Wednesdays. No, not that one. And I simply early out the Wednesdays. I save the schedule. If you want to know what that schedule is, hit the little pencil. And it tells you what the schedule is, what time it begins, and the audio file. Any audio file can be any sound. I loaded some new ones here, so let's make a change. Let's take the five minute bell, and right now it's a musical scale. And let's see what we got here. Okay, we're gonna have a 30 second bell. We're gonna preview it first. So we're going to choose that, and we're going to save it. And right now it's playing the entire school, or I can choose a specific zone. I created some zones here. I've got first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, and all of that. And then the lunch zones, and the kindergarten zone. But right now we're going to play it for the whole thing. And now you've got the music on there. I've got a... When we were doing the training for Cooter High School, because it's right next to the district office, we had loaded as the test to show it was um, Thunderstruck by ACDC. <laughs> We used it to test the rooms at, at Boulder, we just kept it. And so we showed it to them, and they liked it so much they used it every single day. <laughs> so the bell is the 30 second thunderstruck bell. Any sound can be, any bell can be any sound. Any notification can be any sound. In fact, I've got some notifications I created for them that specifically were to show you how it sets up. And it, it's really cool how the notifications work, and then I simply apply it. So one of the other questions you had on this, and please guys, um, I know it's been a long day, but please um, please ask questions or comments or anything that, uh, besides the uh, failures in equipment and transit. <laughs> Programming of a bell schedule. Let's show you how to do a new bell, okay? Um, let's do a little road trip, come on over. Can we HDMI that panel to that panel? Um, sure, if I've... Absolutely. That's actually a really good point, Jay. How long is my HDMI cable? Well, I don't know. I'm about 15 minutes. I think So we just, you know what, let's do? Let's just take that, unplug it, and bring it over. Oh, this one. Thank you. 
give it a second to boot up. Those are great panels. <laughs> did he study the panel? <laughs> he did. So it's going to load. This is actually, uh, when you unplug it, it will automatically load where it's at now. In, I'm in a Wi-Fi environment here. In a school, you don't use the Wi-Fi because the Wi-Fi is finicky. You always hardwire it. This front office console, you can be mounted on the wall or you put it on your desk, but it's always hardwired. And as a general rule, the law requires there to be 30 minute egress from paging solution. So you have to have 30 minutes when the power goes down. So we put a battery backup on the server, it's part of our kit. We put a battery backup on the front office console. And you can have more. Again, this is just a computer logging in. Okay, so we're going to build a new, a, uh, um, we're going to build a new schedule. So let's do this. We can either build a new schedule, and I think that the one that you mentioned was that uh, we have a, 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 an assembly schedule. So we add a date type. Actually, let's do that again. Let's take the normal schedule, and we're going to truncate that schedule. So we're just simply going to copy that schedule, because it makes a lot more sense copying a schedule than it is to create a new one, because we don't have to take the time. So we're now going to take the normal schedule, And we're going to change the name of this schedule. And let's, what shall we call it? Um, assembly? Sure. Yeah. And let's say it's an assembly schedule and it's. And what I don't like, I really don't like that color. So let's make it. Uh, I, I must have not like that. What we commission is we, need, we make sure that we don't. Pull that down at all. I don't like red because red scares people. Let's do purple. So we're going to apply purple as the, the schedule. And then at this point, to just change it, we simply change times. So let's say we're going to have one less. Now, this is an elementary schedule. So let's, uh, let's just say that we do away with our lunch and get out early. You simply edit it and you change your time. And again, I'm only going to do one because you, you can see exactly um, how we, we do that or we can actually cancel this bell. So let's just cancel the bell. We're going to delete that bell. And then let's get out of, uh, we're going to delete that bell. And we're going to change the kinder end of day. We're going to make that 145. And we don't want to do the musical scale. What else can we have here? And you don't set that up here. That evacuate is, uh, might seem familiar. I'll show you that. Oh, good day to be alive. It's going to be a long battle. We're going to do that one. This is... Okay, that's going to be our station. And that's going to play... Um, it's only going to play in exterior and the kinder, because it's kinder bell. Most of the elementary schools that we do will put the kindergarten playground as its own zone. And again, all I need to do that is one of these, an amplifier and a speaker, or a series of speakers. And now I put that on the map as it's going in the zone. And then end of day bell, I'm going to make 2 o'clock. So I can edit that. And I say, no, I want a 3, I want a 2. And it's going to play in the entire school. I did a little thunderstruck or else we would have had thunderstruck playing for 30 seconds. 11. I, were you here when I told you that? I think you had walked out. That's what Cooter High School wanted. They wanted. They liked it so much. I was actually training. And that's what the principal wanted. Anyway, so I've just set up an entire new bell schedule. And it's not terribly difficult to, to set it up. It's a lot easier if I'm sitting here. As a general rule, the kiosk you can do most anything on. But because of the nature of the kiosk, it's easier to do with the mouse and on a computer. So it's, you desktop and set it up. Remember, this is just a website or intranet page uh, that is controlled by authentication levels. So I'm going to go down through this, even though we've touched some of those things. Uh, we just showed you how to program a bell schedule and modify an existing bell schedule. You don't have to have any skill because you notice that I didn't have much when I was doing that. 
um, to make an intercom call. Home does everything. Home allows you to make zones, and zones are groups of rooms. Um, while we're here, let's create a new zone because that's what a lot of people want to do. I have, let's say I have a testing, and at Grandview, and I don't know what your real first grade, second grade, so I just kind of made it up. Um, that one over there is not wanting to log into that port. It's entirely possible that that is offline, but it's okay. It's the amplifier is fine. It's just the device here. It's, it'll look like it's logging in. It's flashing red and then it'll go green when it logs in. So it's there. So if I want to make a new zone, and we don't let everybody do this because this is kind of where we want, this is where we set up the map. So if I want to add a new zone, I can also change the map and add up all of those items. So this is going to take a second to load the map. We're having fun today, aren't we, folks? Doing the same thing here. So this is actually a hardware issue for me. So what do you think? Should I tell him that the uh, his Wi-Fi and his little unit is great? <laughs> so I'm going to hardwire it. Who's the adapter? Who's it? So Tom built, Tom Dobson built us a, a wireless device. What I don't want to do is log into the uh, online one. So they have a server that's living online, doesn't have any devices, because I can't show the, the notifications I want to show you. So maybe I do that when I come back to it. I apologize for being so choppy on this today, folks, because that's not what I intended. Let me show you the, not, uh, the, the notifications. You had asked about apps. In one of your questions, you had mentioned, how can I launch the notifications? So there's lot, several different ways to do notifications. We had some that we had already said. So I'm going to start this one. This is just it's built in for fire. So anybody connected to the system has a notification. I'm going to end the notification. And you can say, I don't want the notification to go in the front office. So we have different setups. I can send it to just the network devices. I can send it to the digital signage players. Um, I don't know if this one, did this go off? Did they have a? Let's do another notification that might seem a little more similar. So we're going to launch the, your SRP notifications. We are in a virtual chat. Now, the message is not very good. This is me making a recording on the console. We are in a home chat. So I can play it once, or I can play it in a loop. This is right now set to a play loop. We are in a home So where's the server for this system? Server's going to live in the, in the school, MDF, or it's going to be? With, with this setup, where's the server? Oh, right here now? Yeah. It's in here. It's a little no, it's a little, uh, like, a little. It's a note for the demo unit. The standard unit is a one year, we don't have any lists. <coughs> and like you said, like you would have one server at each, your best practice would be to have one server at each school, correct? Uh, yes, I like that because it's, you're not going to get damage or cut. If, you, if it's going to be a safety system, and for what you folks are asking for, it becomes part of your safety response system. Mm -hmm. So I would absolutely say that you want a server at each school. And also have a backup ready. So if it goes down, we can help with the virtual setup that if it goes down, you can change servers or then virtualize it immediately and just give it the same IP and then everything VLAN set up. I'll give you an interesting example along that very same line. So San Marcos School District in Southern California, uh, they were going from an old school to the new school. Well, the contractor who was building the new school did not purchase the server in time from us. And they were going to change over Christmas break. Well, audio enhancement was closed from the day before Christmas or the Friday before Christmas till the day after the new year, we came back that Monday. So what I did is I got with our people and we downloaded a virtual server in his office at the, in his network operation center. And then all of the devices, he set up the VLAN so they could see from the school to the district office, 
and we logged every remote, we just built the whole thing. In fact, if you've got a, a backup ready, because this backs up either daily or weekly or whatever you want to do it, we can do it internally to itself or you can do it to a location, which I always suggest do it to a location on a setup, because invariably, I had a school in Provo uh, School District where BYU is, and the teachers were messing with the admin side and shouldn't have, and they, they lost the math. The whole second floor was done. So we logged in, found the backup, loaded the backup, within 30 minutes they were there. But it was the backup from the Friday before. What they were doing is they're going into the map and they were changing. Right now, I put classroom names or classrooms, but you can go and put uh, teacher names. So they were going in and changing the room number to the teacher name because they didn't know what room number they were in, but they knew it was Mrs. Jones. So they looked for Jones. And by the way, that search function up top, if you have somebody that is new, they know they're looking for Mrs. Jones, but you're not sure where they are. If you loaded that information, you can type in Jones and it'll pull that up. So it's kind of, it's, I think they call that a federated search. Make sense? So as, as a best practice, it's always best to have a backup ready that you restore it to and your system's up and running again. Even if your server dies, we can have you probably up within an hour and a half, two hours. Now, you have to have everybody there and you have to have that network access and, and that, but we've done it many times. We don't have a lot of failures. We have you know, 10,000 systems out there, we, but from time that, you're going to have a 0.1 failure rate or a 1% or whatever it is, and you have to be prepared for it. Okay. Notifications there. This is another thing you don't do, by the way. So, let's see if I can load up if it was working earlier today. Here. I want, you, I want you to see that. So let's take a second and I'm going to I'm going to move the whole thing hard. These are on battery. But let's reinitialize everything. So I want to show you the app. The app allows you to do everything except for make a live page. We decided early on that as a no administrator, you have to have authentication and you have to have the right security certificates. However, we decided that you, we didn't want a teacher or an administrator that can have to make the page walking down the hall and making the page underneath the speaker or with a group of students saying something crazy. So you actually make the recording and go click, I want to save it, send it, and then you choose what zone it goes to, whether it goes to a classroom. Uh, you, it's really, we decided you don't really need the map on this, something this size, but you can go to all the zones and all the notifications so that you can make pages, you can send the emergencies, all of those things so you're not tethered. You can also launch pages and notifications from any system phone within your school. I have a question. Yes, sir. This is off, off subject while this is moving real quick. Yes, sir. Um, does Audio Enhancement have a standalone Audio Enhancement system just for voice lift? Like that one? Yeah. Well, well yes, that, yeah, without the whole thing? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, like is it, is, it, is it this system or is it just something no, else? No, so all this is is an app. This is the receiver. So every system is going to have either this XD receiver or an all-in-one. Okay. This one has the network portion to it. I make another one that doesn't have the network portion, just a classroom amplifier receiver and then a microphone and you put in four speakers in the ceiling. Or in this space you put four in the wall if you can't have access to the ceiling. We do have a sound system for pretty much any environment that you want to do. In fact, before we did this, that's exactly what we did. So let's see if we're back up here. That little green button I pressed is making sure my SIP registration is connected. <coughs> I just wanted to see what's uh, better there and then here. because I don't like what's going on with my system. So I wanted to make sure. Um, okay, okay. That's my comments on it. So the reboot seemed to help. We'll see if this is coming. This is my digital signage. There it is. Okay, so I should be able to launch this one again. And it is by authentication only, so you have to have uh, a UDIO. No, 
This is me. So only one person can log in under their username only once. I'm logged in there under my username, so I created another account. Um, would you like to see how easy it is to create a new account? Because I believe that is something that you will be doing. Sure. Especially when we have to different permissions on different. Yeah, that's what I'll show you the permissions are. So let's go through that. So you go to the system settings, and it's called roles. And these are all the current users. You notice I have two user accounts. I have one of the accounts for this, so that I can use this um, setup. If I add a new account, I fill out the name. I suggest, if you're not an administrator, to not use your email address, because the system, when it makes changes as administrator, will send you emails. If you don't need to be getting the email, then no. Don't get bombarded by email. Emails about what? That you're an administrator of the system and somebody made a system change and you got an email about it. A lot of systems do that, you don't want that there. And you get to choose which group they belong to. Admin or you guys. School admin would be a school level administrator. They don't have the ability to change the network. And then standard is what normally the front office console is logged in for the person to use it. Uh, a front office um, not a senior administrator, not a principal or assistant principal. You may want to put one there. I've had school districts that choose they want to put another console there because they think it's really cool. But you can log in with your computer, so it's really not worth a whole lot to do that there. In high schools, they'll do it, but they don't give them admin access at that level. They can, they, they really, you can say you want to change bills. I can show you that. I'm going to just get rid of that. Permissions. So the permissions are quite granular. I can choose at which level gets what, specifically. I want to give a front office person the ability to change zones on a map, because changing zones is click, 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 save. But I don't want them to be able to edit the map and screw it up. And I don't want them to do anything else besides that. I don't want to create new rooms, I don't want to change the, because you can read, screw up the entire map, and it's all, the assigning of network devices is all based upon that. So you only want the senior administration to do that. So they can make pages, they can answer calls, um, but they can't change any of the network. So it goes really granular. Very few do we make a lot of changes, but there are some districts that have decided that they want to do, they want to make it that granular. So giving somebody an, a, um, an account access is pretty easy. Did you gentlemen see, ladies and gentlemen, did you see that we also can LDAP integrate? If you put the teacher name and the picture, let's say, when you select a room, so I just want to show you how that is. When you select a room, if I've loaded the information, their picture would come here, and their name would come here. So it depends how you want to set it up. LDAP can automatically feel if you choose to. You can make it look like you want. But it'll tell you the device in the room and if there's a bell schedule that it's part of and all of that information. Seems that like it, it, I didn't put the computer lab into any of the zones except for the entire school. Uh, the entire campus, its, uh, it's code is 5000. That's actually firmware controlled. But all of the other zones, you can actually change the name or the code. This is 5009. Oddly, it was the ninth zone I created. The system automatically gives it a SIP address, so you don't have to worry about that side of it. It just does it. If you don't like it, you can edit it. You edit it from this setup. Let's see if it really gives us the map this time. If we integrate this into our, our phone system, we would have to give it a specific extension, right? If you're going to give it, you don't do that because otherwise you're required to have licenses. What we do is we give a, a SIP trunk. So we go to System settings, set, and then this right here, this is where your SIP trunk is going to set up. Okay. So we'd have to have server information. So if I want to add a SIP trunk, okay, I get it. It, it works just like your phone system. Truthfully, this is running in the server an asterisk phone system. 
And that's why it's so easy to utilize. And we did that because Astro was one of the original four to start for years and years ago. And it allows us to be able to control it very easily. SIP packets are pretty easy to control. Hard to read, pretty easy to control. So that it makes good sound, it's got good connectivity, and we can control it. And that's what became important to us. On this edit page, this is also where our audio files are. So on my computer, I, I'm a bit of a geek. I kind of like this one. So, however, the size of the file you load, however long that is, is the length of the bell. So, my high school, they wanted to load 90 second clips. So, I taught them to use Audacity, which you can use any program. You can cut it up and change it. What I like about Audacity is because you want to make sure the bells and all the sounds are the same level, all the way across. Otherwise, it's like it's, it's nighttime TV, where you're watching a movie and the commercial comes out and it blasts you. And your wife yells at you, What are you doing? or uses some other colorful language. So what I suggest if you ever load any sounds, the music is everybody's going to, is you make sure all the levels are not asking you can do it visually. There's a meter. Where you peak, you just you can adjust it so you can peak at the same level on all the sounds and then load them. But I, I stress production quality. It took me a little bit. You'll notice some of these are SRP lockdown, SRP secure. Those are the recordings I made. And by the way, uh, let me go back to that. I need to get rid of that pull down setting. I did not do so. If I want to add in a sound, when we first started this, we did not have the ability to record from the console. But when we were beta testing with a large school district, they said, hey, we're going to put this in about 110 schools. However, we would like to be able to make a recording directly with it without having to go to a recording pro a program and upload it, which is a pain in the butt. So we can make a file. I'm actually going to create a new one right now. I'm going to test how this works. This is a test. I'm going to test how this works. This is a test. Again, you want to make sure that your levels are there, that you kind of, I actually made the other, the secure and the lockdown tests. I did a couple of times because I was too loud. Make sense? Yes. So let me go back again to the notifications. Because you asked about, and in your RFI documentation, in the bid for the school, you requested or required that you had audible and visible notifications at every entry and at every point in the hallway. So there's a couple of different ways to do that. You notice that in the classroom, when I called the room, <coughs> I have. That flash up. So I can set it up to the, when a intercom call, a bell, or any of that goes off, I can I can set that up. Is that a customizable like light flash? Or I, have, I have different colors. Okay, gotcha. But like you could be solid and not flashing, or is it just a strobe? This one is just like this. If you're gonna want to have that kind of functionality, then you're gonna go with the, the network based. Gotcha. This is an algo strobe that is we've Traded API information with them. We also trade API information with the A and E devices. We didn't have our visible, this is called InfoView, which is part of the Epic system, but I can put notification signs in any space. One of the things when we designed our, vis our visible notification, we had to have the ability that in the east end of the school, in an evacuation command, that we gave them information for that end. And on the west end, we gave different information. And then for the digital signage that's in the main entry, where you've got this 50 or 75 inch TV, I guess 50 is pretty small these days, or 86 even. <laughs> you had to give that one. So it had to be addressable per zone, per, per device. So when we set that up, <coughs> let's see. I did set it up for the other digital device, but so, no, notifications. Alert is the panic system. So let's say I'm doing this one. Attention staff and students, we are in a lockdown. Lock your doors, turn off the lights, stay out of sight. Attention
potential status of students. We are in a lockdown. And it'll go for as long as you want it to go, or just play. In the event you ever have an issue where sound just goes, I'll give you an example. So my kids high school, they had a DVD player. And they didn't have a volume control for the DVD player because they don't have them. But they wanted to be able to adjust it independently. So we have the ability for a teacher to log in on their computer and give them a virtual six button controller. Just like they had the six buttons on the wall to do whatever we wanted to do. Well, I wanted to learn it so the, my senior field engineer was standing next to me, my good friend, and I was going through creating the event. Well, my mouse on my computer was dying. It, it just would jump. I don't know if you ever had that. Well, right next to, we put a volume up and a volume down digital command in the drop, via internal RS-232 processes. We made it so the DVD input would raise or lower in volume, which is plus and minus. Well, on the down button, I created two events. One of them was I didn't know, because my mouse was playing Jonas Brothers Sucker everywhere. <laughs> it went off. There's a button here that no matter what's going on, you press stop all. And it issues a cease and desist command everywhere. Luckily, we did it. It happened twice. And the way we found it, quite frankly, is we log everything. There's a button here that logs absolutely everything. Every registration, every piece of information flowing through Epic to a device or internally. And they said, what time? At, at 9.20, we were able to go in and say, here, somebody created this. And we were able to del delete the event so we can find it. But you want to make sure that whoever's doing that knows better what they're doing than me. What was the song, Sucker? <laughs> we get together. I, I'll play for you. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it can do anything you can think of. If you can communicate via standard protocol, uh, RS-232, HTTP messaging, relay, contact closure, open, closed, latching, non-latching, whatever it is, <coughs> we can communicate through our events. If you can think of a pathway, steps to get there, I can open your garage door and I'll lock your door to the home. Meaning that it's extremely powerful and it's not terribly difficult to set it up. Um, in fact, that was one of the questions, is how to create a notification. So one of the notifications that I think I did not create is, I think I didn't create evacuate. So let's create evacuate. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. So this is real time. Let's see if I have an evacuation one. All right, we are going to add an action. That's all clear. I don't want to do that. properties. Let's go to the bottom. We're going to add an event. And we're going to call that event evacuate. It's one of the protocols, right? And it's going to display a name, meaning that on that notification list, it's going to be oop. And again, this is one of those that you're not going to want to create. Using this, you want to create on your computer. Event type. The notification, um, choose file, now I have it there. I'm not going to choose the event visit that it looks like because I don't have my computer there. So let's add that. So I added an event. Now I can go look at evacuate. And I'm going to say I want to put that evacuate on, let's see, 80 o'clock. And the event action. It's going to be play sign, and I'm going to choose that. No, I want that one. I want this one, which is that right there. And the sign I'm going to select, I haven't created that one yet. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have this mad image. So now, I didn't choose an audio file yet, but I have an evacuate, and I can start the notification. This one I wrote just in a lockdown. I actually called it Matt because I had a picture of Matthew McConaughey, and I was just going to flash that on the screen. I can put any it's image anywhere. My wife likes Matthew McConaughey, so I do that very often when she's seeing it. 
and that plays until I, um, until I turn it off. I didn't select a, a stop on it, so I'm just going to stop all. It's a lot easier to do from a computer because then you can do all the steps. I can set up a sign and I can bring it in. I didn't do that to create the sign, but this is how you go to the image gallery. If it's going to be, yeah, if it's going to play a game with me. The server sometimes when I'm doing something's Wi Fi will do this. But I can up, that's where you upload your signs in your, you set up the, the file, the visual file, and then you assign that to one of the notifications and or digital signings. This one, I already, I already loaded it. Is that, just a, is that just a screen? All that is is an Android device. It's the same thing this is, yeah. except for smaller. Because a, a guy set it up so I can take a demo out and I've got a, con, a kiosk. Right. And but you're not using sign. it as that. You're using it as a digital signage right now. Correct. This one I am using. I can do the same thing on here. So I just, what I'm getting at is in the, in the sense of the what it's doing there. What that one was doing. I'm talking about the, the clock one and then showing stuff. That could be any screen. Because exactly. this is what the is. Correct. Okay. So we have clocks. We have emergency signs. And in the emergency side, you can use, we would use as a notification. Yeah. And then I have digital signage. Yeah. So you can have a sign you've built in the main entry. And then at a certain time on your schedule, I can schedule the digital signage for the lunchroom. You've got a lunch schedule built. And you play it during lunch. And when lunch is over, you schedule something else to go. So you can set those up in advance, but when the notification goes, when you do a, a, a notification or emergency or an alert sign, that takes over. Because we built a hierarchy. The panic and the notifications are the highest hierarchy. It takes over everything. Because it's a life and, safe, life and death situation. Unless the district chooses it not to be. So the other thing I want to show you is what happens when you press the panic button on the microphone. If you integrate it with the sound system in the classroom, that's what's showing off here. Oh, I pressed the wrong one. Let's do this one. Mine's coded to that. See the red lights? I don't have a network connection back to Epic. If I do it on this one, this is the mic that's paired with that. Now that's going to go red, and it's going to launch. So you're going to make sounds. <laughs> that sound is controllable. <laughs> it is designed to get your attention. <laughs> Oh, these guys freak out. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, 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 Katie and Kevin are like, what? <laughs> what the heck is going on? Do it again. Yeah. <laughs> when you end it, it ends the event for anybody. Anybody that is logged in. Now, this, if this doesn't turn off, this would, we reset it internally. When I said end, it reset the whole setup. If you don't, Every five minutes, it's hard coded in the firmware, it's going to take another event. Now, something cool about the microphones and the panic alert it's 1.9 gigahertz. It's paired to a room and it has a radius. This is always broadcasting full strength. We, we tell the device to discriminate at a certain gain level. Once it drops below the gain level, that's how we establish our radius, kind of caught, I think. Once I drop below the certain gain level, it no longer communicates with the paired room. So the microphone turns off when you're walking down the hall and going to the bathroom, right. essentially. Yeah. So I have a question. Yes, please. Because that operates at one point, you said seven? 1.9 gigahertz. 1.9 gigahertz, right? Nothing's on that frequency. 1.9 gigahertz goes through walls pretty easily. The higher the frequency, yes, it does. So it, but it reduces the radius it goes. That's why we... Absolutely. Like you got to continue Please continue to the okay. So how does that not, how many of those can you have in the same vicinity of others? Without them, about 130. DECT actually operates on two transmit and receive. It's a it's a communication back and forth. That's how we're sending information back and testing. We have a high low setting on this. It comes out of the factory as low, which is about the same right site for a classroom. And when you go outside the classroom a little bit, it'll work. But when you walk down the hall, it turns off. This will go amber, meaning that I'm out of my range. We have issues right now. Okay. Yeah. Infrared devices because they're just infrared. They don't Correct. Care. Like an occupancy when, when you got uh, close to another classroom, it speaks through their their uh, 
There might be, but there's speakers, there's right? Yeah. yeah. So, so how does your system not allow it? Okay, so when I pair it, it actually makes a handshake pairing connection, and then it's done pairing. It only communicates with that receiver and none other in a microphone setting. I can walk to any room, if I'm outside of its range, it just doesn't work. So it's not an analog signal at all. It's it, it, is, it is truly a digital, digital signal. So it's, it, 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 it's transmitting packets and then doing a DDA on the, on the or analog to digital from you. Exactly. And then right. a, a DDA on the, on the device. Correct. Okay. That's how we can set it up. And we can discriminate against the high low. But what I was getting at, if I'm walking down the hallway, I'm no longer within the range. So let's say I'm in 18B and I'm walking down towards the computer lab. I am no longer within range of my microphone, so I can't broadcast. But I see something happening, I press my panic button. That's the worst. It talks to all the other rooms in panic mode, and Epic discriminates. It basically tells each one of these receivers, tells Epic, hey, I've got a device in panic mode. Here's where it is, and we start to triangulate. So it, it's got like a, it's got a, an override, right? right? So it'll when you hit it, it goes off. You hit it, every single everything turns on and says, "Okay, I'll let you." See. If I see you, yeah. I'm going off. So it allows you to have the panic button work in the hallways, and every thirty seconds it cycles, and every receiver that it sees, it's going to show up as a circle. The stronger the signal, the smaller, the more localized. The weaker the signal, the larger. And now I have a Venn diagram in the hall, and I know right where that person is. And 30 seconds later, they're down the hall. This whole situation is moving. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's one of the key reasons we went to infrared. Those microphones over there are extremely efficient. You went away from infrared, correct? We went away from infrared. That's right. Sorry, I must go. Because now, infrared doesn't work outside. The sun wins. With 1.9 gigahertz decked, nothing else is on our frequency. It was designed for cordless phones. There's really only two manufacturers anymore, LG and Panasonic. So nothing, nothing messes with our frequency. And I can set this up outside. As long as I have a network device and an XD receiver, the way it works is there's an RS-232 connection from the, uh, the, the XD receiver to the network device, three conductor, and that's how it communicates. So it receives a signal, sends it to that, that sends it to Epic, and Epic says, oh, Here's your string, here's where you are, here's your issue, let's post it on the screen. That's really, the calling from the classroom and the panic is the reason we use this here. So if nobody logs into the computer, or nobody registers on their, their own phone, I can't send a signal to anybody. So you always have this here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, can that lab be paired to multiple? Not at the same time. Okay. Um, oddly though, this receiver will do three at a time. Three microphones at a time. Okay. It remembers up to 99, even with power outage. It's got a capacitor in that stores it for, I don't know how long. We've had it down for a month and it's still stored it. So, let's say I have a lab where I want 10 microphones. I want a teacher and I want nine of the student handed on mic, these. The first three that turn it on, get it. But if somebody turns off, and the next one has been not been paired to another room, you turn it on, it's on. That's why the microphones actually have a push to talk. When you turn on and on, it just pushes down the push to talk. And now I'm talking over there. But I can turn it off and you can turn yours on. It takes a half a second to link and now you're talking to it. Because it remembers 99. The mic only pairs to one. We had a problem over in Pooter as we were setting it out. Teacher would say, hey, my microphone's not turning on. I said, look at the back of your mic. Is it green? Yes. That means it's got a handshake connection somewhere. It's connected. Turn it over. She'd taken the microphone from next door. She was talking, and they were listening to her next door. <laughs> so it's, the system can do a whole lot. You just you systematize how you do it. We suggest you put a label on it. Actually, when we set them up, and put a label on it so it goes in the room. However, if I want to change... Walk into a new room, I put it in pairing mode, I press two buttons, it's negotiating. Hello, hello. Test, test. Am I not getting my mic here? Speaker? I think it's okay. It's just like you, you can, you can, 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a Bluetooth speaker. No, it's not. And I can do that. Oh, by the way, that was. Let me make sure I, I, I address all of them. You wanted Bell programming? That actually turns on to a kind of screensaver. And when you walk in front of it, it senses it and it comes back or you touch it. We wanted to be able to program Bell schedule. Bell schedule is click, click, click. To have a Bell, you have to have a zone. A zone can be any combination or one. Provo High School, so the guy that does the uh, hands-on, the AV lead guy, um, his name is Kincaid, he and I are good friends. When we were setting up their school, they had an art class that was always late. Every single day they were late, kids were late coming out. So when we first set it up, we put a bell, a five minute bell, in that room. He thought he was hilarious. He did the uh, clean up, clean up, everybody, everywhere. <laughs> and so he put that, I started cracking up, and that bell went off. They called immediately and said, don't ever do that again. <laughs> but you can do a clean up bell, or an early bell at any time, at any location. The smallest unit can be is a network device. So it could be a classroom, an office, a hallway, whatever it is. So you can have an unlimited number of bells that play at different times. And then to silence the bell, let's say you're having testing, you create a new zone. I, I work in the same issue with, for some reason, it just doesn't want to come through. My computer doesn't want to, hold on, let's give it a second. These things came up. It's the graphic files. This is this is one of the problems when you put it on the milk. It just doesn't have enough. And under that is an old note. We took the old uh, demo units and pulled them apart and used the same note. I'm going to go back and reuse that, by the way. <laughs> um, but you simply touch, 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 and save. If I want to go create a new zone, it's touch, 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 and click save and name it. It automatically is going to generate a SIP ID. Funny though, it'll tell you what the number of zones we've ever created on the system because it, once you initialize the system, it remembers how many you've done. So the new one would be zone 38 or zone 68. Um, turning on and off existing speakers, you just deselect the, the device. So if I didn't want to have outside, would you do me a favor, unplug that, plug it back in. You notice that the lights are there, it has a reset. Follow it up, record, unplug it, plug it back in. Not that one, the white one. <laughs> yeah, it's a Phoenix connector. I took it off there and made it that way because normally there's a, it's in the base. Okay, see it reset, it wasn't all red. You simply deselect the area. So if I don't want outside, or you don't want any bell, I can simply say, or schedule, let's do that. So let's say, <laughs> oh, I set it off. I didn't reset my mic. So it's still in panic mode. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, What is the joke that only takes once? But that's, so that's why you, you, you always reset it. It'll stay on until power dies. <laughs> it's default, it saves power on the microphones for the panic. So even if it says it's completely dead, it stores 10% for the panic. Because that's its number one priority. Okay. You had a question about remote cloud access. All the cloud is is a server located somewhere else. We have chosen not to make it cloud available. I can do it virtual, and I actually have a server on the cloud that we use for demonstration, so I don't have to carry this whole thing. I can log into it. In fact, I could probably do that to show you some of the other features if this is not going to come up for me. The downside to it is that there's an inherent latency. So the company we used to partner with before we made our own got purchased by a company called G2, and they've got a one of the schools that bought some more equipment from me, because I can still make it work with theirs. Uh, they can't make theirs work with ours. Um, they wanted to use, they, they wanted some more equipment, and they were having a problem with latency. I, we had made a, cor a corporate decision in a security and safety model that we don't want a cloud-based system. Can we work, make it work? Absolutely. Is it smart? Heck no. Because in the moment, that's why we don't make a Wi-Fi. Because in the moment you need it, 
something's going to interfere. We had an experience a while back in Clark County, in Las Vegas. They do war games. Uh, I think they call it Red Flag, where you've got an aggressor group and you've got the U.S. They're just two different pilots. First thing they sent up was an A6 to basically screw with all of the frequencies to shut down all RF transmission. And Wi-Fi goes down too, because it's broad spectrum. It takes care of everything up to 100 gigahertz. We, we chose not to do that. We just, I talk forever, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's why our server, it's not, we don't do Wi-Fi from the, the server is always hardwired. All of the devices in the classroom are always hardwired. All of our devices for common zones are always hardwired. Our devices for, for strobes are always hardwired. Our console is hardwired, so we don't get what I'm experiencing today with a weak network. Your network can be fantastic. You might have the best network in the world, but we've decided we're not going to do that because it's not worth the risk for the game. Does that make sense? Sure. Why is cheap? Well, it, it's, it's expensive for a, a good switch and a wire run. Set by somebody days. who sells wire. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when Bowman was doing, we were doing their audio systems, they put, somebody went through and did Cat 6 a they paid a eleven hundred dollars to drop. So it's, it becomes really expensive. But for the situation we're doing it, it works so much better that you don't have to drop out. So the mobile app that you are using, that mobile device would be required to be on the internal yeah. part of the network? It would be on the wireless network, you'd have to make sure that that network is reachable yeah. to the hardware network. You're exactly right. Okay. So like what everybody else told us today is that like if you want to have it available by the cloud, you have to use a VPN if you're offsite. Right. Well, and that's so, exactly the same thing. Yeah. So the, the, the reality is, you can access this anywhere you want. I've got schools that, we used to have an RSA appliance on every system that we log, so we could log in remotely. But so did, in today's security world, it just didn't make sense. So at this point, we set up a VPN if the district wants help. The beauty is, if you have an issue, we have level two support. Our support model is unlimited. So the guys out in San Marcos wanted to add a camera. We had a VPN in. They put the camera in, they got it connected, they got it on the right VLAN, they put DHCP to put it in our range. I logged in, said, oh, there it is, click, selected a room, assigned it to the room, and now they had access to the camera. Or if something's not working, we can go in and we can look at it. If it once we're in VPN, it's like we're in front of it, right? So that's, it's a good point. You always want a VPN. You have to be within the firewall and the Wi-Fi to make this work, and you have to have a current certificate okay. that I can launch anything. Except here, it doesn't really want to work today. <laughs> it worked in the hotel, wonderful. <laughs> Best laid plans, right? Uh, volume adjustment by room. So I can go digitally from here, classroom volumes, are for the classroom unit. There is a DSP. Right now, I have that unit, and here's the DSP. I can access all inputs and all outputs. Internal input six is the paging solution. So I can increase the gain. We had a problem in Pooter that the teachers were turning the microphones up too loud. Microphones are on input number one. So we set the maximum level in DB and then they can go all the way up and down, but they can't go lower than what we said, or higher than what we said. Or I can set the maximum output. I can always change it. In fact, I got a call today from the lady at one of the schools in San Marcos, California. They only have two systems. And she says, I need two classroom units. Okay. So she went in, I walked her through it. She selected it and changed the game level. Okay, go play a bell in there, see how it sounds. Have a call in, see how it sounds. Is it loud enough? No. And she just, it's, it's uh, that simple. Zero dB is all the way up, negative 72 is all the way down. It's a true dB rating, not a scale. You know what I'm talking about. I do. <laughs> Very few people do. Thank you for that. I nerd out on the audio engineer stuff. So. Even if you didn't, you nodded your head. Thanks for that. <laughs> the other thing we can do is for that device, all of the network devices, it is this common zone here. I can go in, and here's the intercom and paging, and then the bells. Bells are a broadcast, it's actually a unicast broadcast, not a multicast. So it only goes to the ones I wanted to. 
And then the bells in paging are all set. Not like the one over there that says, hey everybody, I'm going to broadcast to everybody, but none of you listen because I'm only going to talk to him. It's actually what it does. Floods the network and then talks to one. I can go and change it. I can also change the gain level on the talk back microphone. I can adjust the half duplex to full duplex levels to get that, rid of that echo. So stuff like that I can do individually on each one. It's also set up that if, let's say, I had five new rooms, you connected them up, you gave it DHCP, you gave it an IP address, what will happen is it will show up as unknown devices, and I simply add them. And then it configures it by itself to the current setup, and you're working. It also tests that panic button. Remember I told you the RS-232 from the sensor to the amplifier? That's how it transmits the panic. I test that. It sends a command and it comes back with its uh, serial number. I know it's good. So we can monitor everything within the system on every level. Okay, so I think there was one last question. Did you guys want to go through the questions that we talked about? What's the delta from a digital speaker to one with visual alerts? So our I visual. Remember what's on there? So if you think you hit them all, it's great. Well, there, I want to. You asked for the, co the the dollar delta. What is the cost difference? This strobe is about three hundred dollars. It can plug into any network device, but it only goes off when the network device is signaled in some way. It's a trigger. The outlook can be anywhere. So if you want to put strobes, and by the way, these are multicolor, multi-pattern. Um, uh, did you notice that I had different colors for the different pad? There's four colors we can use. And I can do two, I can do, rotate all four. It's a pretty cool little device. But if I'm going to have one in the entry, a, a visual device, a strobe, it's about $1,100 for that out of strobe. For the digital signage, if you already have the monitor, this little player right here is the digital signage player that then you plug that into any monitor and that becomes this. Is that a barracks box? It is. Barracks makes the chips. We don't have the issue that the barracks had over the other side. I, I know the Anuncio Com 50, the 60s, the, yeah. Yeah. the in streamer, the X streamer, and all of those fun things. Uh -huh. uh, the problem with that was not the barracks device. The problem with that was the head end. Oh, there was a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> it's a myriad of problems. Uh, you are accurate. There is a myriad of problems. Um, what we ended up making. You remember when they, they sh showed that to you and all the things they promised it could do? What we wanted to do was build something that schools could use and we took all the things it could do except we're not doing video. We're doing signage, we're not doing video. Because you have to have streams in, we were unwilling to open up ports to create a security issue. So we don't do a video solution, you're gonna have to do something else if you want a video solution. Um, but we do everything else they promised we can do and it's pretty simple to do. Now connecting with um, training is unlimited. When we do a first training, we'll, we'll make sure they use it, they can do the training, then we'll come back and do as many as you want. For you folks, we do what is called Epic Experience in Utah. In fact, we did one this just earlier this week that I left early for, wanted to come here. Uh, that basically trains you as if you were a technician. Maybe not all the way to level two. Level one is just basic, level two is a, then you can commission your own for resellers or, or our own people. However, so we'll, we'll let you come to it. When who did we get up? We had about 30 schools, maybe 20 schools up and running. We took we brought Nate, um, Nate Walling, and uh, Tyler or Tyson. I'm sorry, my brain. Um, we brought Tyson out, and they went to the Epic Experience. So now they can take care of their own. Now I've offered to them if they want to come back to level two, so they can be certified as a technician if they want to be. And then we take care, we want you to take care of your own stuff. There's a cost and we'll fly you out or I'll comp it and you pay for your own flights and your accommodations. We want you to be able to take care of your own stuff. I know that's kind of foreign to the whole industry. Most everybody else wants you to come out and have service calls. And that's how they make money. We don't ever want a service call. We want you folks to be able to take care of yourself. And if you have a problem, we have about 10 people who do nothing but answer service calls on the phone and they log in and take care of issues. That's our level two technical support. And if they can't do it, we have a couple of guys that are level three, which means they go into the code if necessary. Um, other alert options besides audible, 
I can send any audible warning anywhere, any visual warning anywhere. Um, clocks, we, do, we don't do a standard clock, we do this. We can connect with any SIP clock. Uh, I can make algo work. I can make A and D. We're actually trading uh, API information. So they're SIP-based devices. Like I said, I got 2,000 of them over in, in Booter. So there's a cost benefit uh, situation there. You have to decide what you want to do or how you want it to look. Um, how does my system work with audio enhancement? Well, we are audio enhancement. So I appreciate using the term. The little A, little E is everybody. The big A, big E is us. It is integrated with it. Now, I probably want to end here, and then if there's any other question, you told mobile, we did with the phones. If you don't put in an integrated solution and you build a building, chances are you're going to put in a microphone system. That's a light speed system up there. there if you, excuse me? There was. <laughs> that's the only thing that's left of it. So. It's easier not to pull that out. I understand. That one wasn't a light speed system. Was that, whose was that? That oh, that's, a, that's an extra. Yeah, that's an extra. That's an extra. That's a voice loop. Um, I pulled it out of the ceiling when we tried to figure out. I make a little device that plugs into the voice lift port, uses its power, and sends our signal back through it. It's an adapter to plug in the sensor. Sorry to tangent. <laughs> Shiny object. Um, if you put in different paging and classroom audio system, by law you are required to mute on a fire alarm, and also mute on page, which means you have to send two wires from the head end or the fire alarm is going to be from the fire alarm and you have to use a relay. So you have to do both of those devices. Or with Epic, I take where is the device? This yellow port is IO. I've got two IOs, two inputs and two outs, but I can only use two at a time. So in Pooter, what we did with the fire alarm is I simply took the two wires. We didn't go to the fire alarm panel. You have to have a certain license for that. They brought us two wires. We connected it into the right pair and then programmed it so it performs a latching contact closure. And when that goes, it plays the message. So I can mute with one device. I can mute the fire alarm and I am the paging. And we send the command so all local sound turns off. Microphones, local audio, it turns off for the paging until the paging is done. Make sense? Mm -hmm. If you don't, you are going to end up paying more to wire that audio system than we would have cost to put in. And I only know that because I had an engineer in Washington that said, hey, do you understand this? Because he, even if it's not our paging system, he still puts in the server because it's cheaper to put in the server and mute every classroom than it is to not do it. Um, I think I touched anything. Is there... Is there any questions? I've gone on for a long time, guys. I would have thrown me out earlier. If I were <laughs> Is there something that I didn't touch besides the failure in my Wi-Fi? Would you like to see how easy it is to really do a zone? <laughs> or can you visualize? Oh, it makes sense. That made, that made a lot of sense. It really, our whole system was designed as touch, 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 save. Right. And then utilize it.